folks, Blues Boy Jag here with yet another cigar box guitar lesson. But actually, it's more like a pedal board review or overview. I don't know. It's my pedal board, basically. So I use this pedal board for my electric guitar gigs, my six string gigs, and my cigar box guitar gigs. I use a four string and a six string cigar box guitar. And I use the same pedal board for my regular tuned six string electric guitars. This pedal board is a handmade board. I bought the wood at Lowe's, oh, I don't know, 15 or so years ago. It's nothing pretty, but it gets the job done. I basically just put some bolts down here and I painted the whole thing. And this is red oak. And I bolted everything up front there. It's pretty straightforward. Like I said, nothing fancy. I don't need a lot of pedals. So let's start out here on the far right, the yellow DOD overdrive. Oh, by the way, I'm pumping this through a Roland micro cube and I'm on the British setting, which is my favorite setting for the micro cube. So this right here is just the amp, no pedals. Got a little bit of distortion on it. So that is just the amp, no pedals used at all. And my DOD over here on the far right gives me just a little bit of crunch on top of the amp setting that I've already got. You may not be able to tell a whole lot of difference on YouTube between the DOD being on or off. Right now it's off, and now it's on. I have this set straight up for the gain and straight up for the level. That seems to work pretty well for any kind of amp that I might use. You want it to be pretty much set where when you turn it off, it doesn't change your volume. It just changes your tone. At least that's the way I like it. Some people use it for a boost, so you might have the volume cranked up on the DOD. So when you want to play a solo, you stomp on it and that gives you more crunch and more volume. I prefer to use the DOD overdrive for just that, a little bit of overdrive. It gives me just enough crunch so I can play rhythm guitar and lead guitar. So I don't necessarily stomp on the pedal for every solo. I usually stomp on the pedal over here, the Spark, uh, which is a booster pedal. That's what I usually use for a solo. The DOD is almost always on because that gives me just a little bit more crunch I don't want my rhythm to be too clean. So the DOD pretty much stays set the way it is right now. I'm straight up on both the uh, gain and the volume on the DOD. So remember, I've got distortion coming through the Roland Micro Cube right now. So now I've got extra distortion with the DOD. So the DOD is off now. And it's on now. It's not a whole lot of extra, but it's just enough extra for what I like to do. So that's the DOD, pretty straightforward. This All right, one. the next one right here is Fender Reverb. It's a 1963 Fender Reverb. It's an amazing pedal. I use this, oh, I don't know, 40, 50% of the time. <laughs> So this has a mixer, which is your volume. I usually keep this one about 50%. Here's the tone. I keep that one at about 20%. The farther you turn it, the brighter it gets. So I like mine somewhere around there. And the dwell is how long the reverb sustains. So I never use that much reverb for the dwell. I usually put it at about 25%. In fact, that dwell is a little bit too much. Now, if I'm playing a gig at a venue, an indoor venue, uh, you don't want a whole lot of dwell on it because it's going to be bouncing around in the venue, depending on what your venue sounds like. 
That's pretty much where I like it. So if I turn the tone up, it gets a little bit brighter. Again, depending on the venue, I may or may not use that tone control and turn it up just a bit. So between the tone and the dwell, you can get it set. Notice how if I turn the treble up, the dwell sustains much longer. So I'm going to turn the dwell up just a bit. Now, I'm at about uh, 25%. Going down just a bit. 10%. 5%. It's a really, really cool pedal. So right now, all I have on is the DoD Overdrive and the Reverb. Notice if I slide up. Very nice reverb delay. my fingers to do all the picking which means I need a little bit of overdrive to get that growl so that's what the DOD is for all right the next one is the vibrato pedal I don't use this a whole lot but every now and then I want to get sort of a old-timey kind of a Leslie speaker effect. Stevie Rivon uses that. You can get pretty crazy with the vibrato if I turn some of these knobs around. So I don't really use more than one or two different settings on this one. So you can tell it gets kind of crazy. Right about there. And every now and then. We set it about right there. I use that sparingly. Depends on the song. Sometimes I'll play it with a solo. All right, next one's the phaser. This is pretty straightforward. This is for country licks. Or country blues. Now I'm going to turn off the DOD here, overdrive. So that's good for rock and roll or country. Very straightforward settings here. This never changes my settings 
I, I leave it the way it is all the time. Now you don't really hear much until you turn it up to about 50%. And that's pretty much where I like it, right about there. It's about, oh, 60, 75%. <laughs> Got a little switch up here, which I never use. You do get a little bit more wow when you flip it down. So if I flip it back up, it's not, not quite as pronounced. It's a little bit more subtle there. straightforward but that really does add a lot to it if you want something more funky or you want something kind of a country style and also slide on this is really good swampy slide is what i call it Alright, the next one over here is the Spark Booster. Which I love. I've used this for several years. Basically, it does not alter your tone or your sound. It just cranks up your guitar. <laughs> Off. And on. Maybe a little bit hard to tell the difference here on this little YouTube camera. Here is without the spark. And on. Off. If we turn the knob up, we're going to get more distortion at the same level. Also, without the spark that's the amplifier distortion and here's the spark now it does add some hum as you can tell I usually set it about right here I use a 1962 Fender Super which is a real clean amp, unless you turn it up way too loud, that makes your ears bleed. So I use the spark to keep my ears from bleeding. All right, the last one I don't really use for a cigar box guitar. I use it for my regular guitar for some Neil Young songs. This is the great Big Muff Electro Harmonics. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So I'm going to turn the tone brighter. It's already pretty bright, but just turn it all the way up. Now I pretty much never use that setting because, as you can tell, it really breaks up and it's hard to hear some of the chords. <laughs> sustain down to about uh, 15 20 percent there a good go-to blues sound for this particular pedal board well it's pretty much already there and it's in the amp so jag why would you even use a pedal board well it's a long story if you play guitar and you've had used some different pedals and different amps over the years you understand that for certain songs you want it just right and for other songs you can have it set rather randomly and it sounds just fine with a regular let's say rock and roll tone but the pedal board allows you to basically customize certain songs for certain different sounds. So if I play country, like I said, I'll use maybe the phaser, maybe the vibrato. If I, use, if I play old timey blues, I'm probably gonna use the Fender Reverb. I keep the DOD on all the time because like I said, I do like a little bit of crunch inherently in my guitar, uh, guitar tone for no matter what song I'm playing. And a phaser mainly for country. And then the Spark is my boost for my solos. And the Big Muff is more of a specialty pedal for only a couple of different songs. I do a couple of Neil Young songs. Check out my website, jagshouse.com. Cigar Box Guitars since 2004. And we'll see you next time.